yeah, guys, it's a good segue into what we're learning about today, um, which, as the title of the film states, Blood Quantum, it represents something. And I'm going to be real honest of my own ignorance regarding the significance of the title and my ignorance around the historical context behind it. I hope after hearing some of this stuff, even after watching the film, I think that's what the film really did is it like encouraged us to ask questions and be like, what is this? Mm-hmm. Let's learn some stuff. And uh, I, I, that's what the director said, like he wanted people to get from it. So yeah. I read some articles as we do here. And as we often often say, I'm not a scientist. I'm not an expert. I learned a little bit of stuff. I hope you inc- take this energy and go learn things also. Mm-hmm. And like research yourself because I'm not an expert. I am a historian because I got a degree in history, but not about this. So I will continue. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I read an article from NPR. It's called, so what exactly is blood quantum? And I'm like, thanks NPR. I was also wondering um, in the article, they give some background on blood quantum defining it as the like amount of Indian blood or native blood that an individual possesses. So if you know, Native Americans generally have an idea of what blood quantum is because it's because of the way the United States has influenced this. Or I guess like European influence in the Americas has stated like that it has to do with commodifying people to see what kind of benefits or land or whatever is distributed. So blood quantum being a way that the United States Department of the Interior calculates percentage of native blood of a person and what that allows in terms of citizenship, rights, benefits, and like recognition from native tribes. Uh, the f- so this is from the article. The federal government, and specifically the Department of the Interior, issues what is called a certified degree of Indian blood. And that is a card similar to an ID card. So in a way, blood quantum is calculated by using tribal documents and usually as tribal official or government official that calculates it. So it's... To my knowledge, one of the only races that requires an ID card in the (laughs) United States. Mm -hmm. Um, And it was originally passed uh, to basically limit their citizenship. So it was put on to native tribes as a way to like eventually have them not exist anymore so that they wouldn't have to honor treaty. um, Mm delegations um so essentially it's like the government's real effed up way of trying to like eliminate native people or have them assimilate into like white culture yeah like they can't you know interracial marry because then their blood is is diminished it's mm-hmm. less it's less what they need <laughs> yeah. yeah that's real after which is yeah this film <laughs> so yeah, yeah. There, and there's another article i pulled from that was uh i believe written by a tribe it says uh what is blood quantum and what does it mean for the future of the oneida um and it says basically that if you are full-blooded oneida if they marry someone is considered like half blooded like so 50 percent their children will only be three-fourths and uh as lakota elder general walking bull said when the native nations adopt blood quantum we can never restore the rock we can only pile stones upon one another um Mm -hmm. and it basically like there's no once you're die like i don't have the right word once you like have a person who's considered full with half like it only goes down you can't like rebuild the rock essentially Mm -hmm. um so it was used like diminishing like it'll keep Mm -hmm. yeah diluting that sort diluting yes thank you (laughs) so yeah it was it was used purely as a way to make it so that the united states did not have to acknowledge and like finish like out treaty obligations so if a, like a certain percentage of people, I believe for Navajo, it was 25% you had to be. Otherwise, like anything less than that, you were not able to be a citizen of your tribe. So sometimes that would like separate families. So like people who had kids, they might be a part of the tribe and a citizen of the tribe, but then their kids could not because of if their like blood was essentially, as you said, diluted. 
Um, and this is like something that's like really putting a toll on native communities because they're essentially losing numbers of people. And the goal is essentially from the United States. So they don't have to give them land. They don't have to give them like benefits through the treaties that were promised. Um, and something it's similar to if you're not familiar with blood quantum, which I wasn't, uh, I had heard of the one drop rule because um, mm-hmm. they actually did teach about that in school. Um, but yeah, the one r- drop that. rule measured the amount of black blood and black people had in society. And that ensured that every person who had at least one drop would be considered black and would be covered under these discriminatory laws and in even earlier days enslaved. So mm-hmm. I also read that it kind of tied back to England and how they divvied up property. Um, So like if you had a relative who died and you had like family who essentially a full blooded son or whatever would be the one to inherit the house. So if they like had family that was further out or if you think like how they designated kings and stuff like that, Mm -hmm. um, like how it was always bloodlines, uh, it kind of... From what I've read, it seems like it stemmed from that. Um, But the biggest thing is it's something that's like decimating Native communities and like really messes with people's identity. I believe the director even had some interaction with this and that like, I believe he said his kids weren't able to be in like considered a part of his tribe because of that. I might be wrong, but I think that's what I read. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's messed up. No one should have a card that basically, I don't think like any other culture has a card that's like, you are this, like racially speaking. So it's like commodifying racial identity and for like the means of property and like to fulfill treaty obligations. So it's like making people only worth how much blood they have and it's like really messed up so that's what I learned yeah well it's like I was um reading this um the this book of novellas called the office of historical corrections Mm -hmm. and in it one of the novellas it's like you know this girl and they're like asked like what she is like someone like kind of mm-hmm. slightly asked and she's like mixed so she's like black but she's also polish and then she had like something else in there and she like makes this statement of like how like she's american right <laughs> like that's what yeah. she is and and it's like that she the american can't come first yet the combination of what she is like in her like different cultures could only have been possible by being an American, like in America, you know, the quote unquote melting pot, which is like, that's not yeah. true. It's not a melting pot. It's like a stew. Yeah. Um, it's like, that's where people of different cultures end up together and have those children. And, and it's really like this cruel government way of like patrolling and keeping people in their little reservations right like to keep them in these little societies where they have to stick to themselves like it inspires them to only associate with each other it's like the toxic royal lines um like those germans where they ended up having the really disfigured like the guy with a very large Uh, chin because it was just like people just marrying and having sex with their very direct relatives because they were like we got to keep the line pure which is gross um and it just like it, it, it inspires that like you know, you are going to stick to your people, you don't touch our people, which is like a quote at the beginning of the film, too. Um, But it it is like, inspiring that but on top of that, which is also gross is like the fact that it is like you said, it's it's not you can never build up that stone, it's always going to be just piling these little, you know, pebbles eventually, because at some point, it's going to be gone. And then how can you tell an entire tribe that none of them are real? (laughs) <laughs> like, how could you say that yeah. you're not that or you're not enough of your own culture For to sure, be awarded yeah. anything? Like, there is a deadline. Like, there is an ultimate end to which we will no longer, like, that the government will no longer have to support and be held responsible for the... For their actions. You know, yeah. The awful... Yeah. Like, and there's, like, a few things in the film that we'll talk about where it kind of very obviously is, like you know, showing those things. I think it's interesting because it is, like, Canadian, too, um, because, like, 
I think as Americans, we forget <laughs> that like that, Canada also America has them. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, hello. Um, and so I think it, that that is really awesome to like, that we can like look at that and be like, oh, right. You know, um, we're yeah. not just, you know, hiding our history that's grotesque, but we're also neglecting other histories. Like we're choosing yeah. specific histories. Well, if you think about it, at. like it all stems from Europe. So Mm -hmm. like the atrocities all stem from yeah. Europe so they they happened here but the, the root of it started there so yeah it all kind it's of the, ties. you know colonialism yeah colonization of places um it was also really uh, telling I think like the fact that it's a zombie film and the fact that we're currently dealing with a pandemic that is you know not zombies but is also like decimating the native community mm -hmm. um because and people it's of color. killing older people so you're losing culture because elders are generally the people who like still have the language and have that history and might not have been able to have the time to pass that down to younger generations mm -hmm. um, yeah so you're also losing a lot because of the pandemic and i think it kind of translates into the film yeah, it's it's a very timely piece, like in, in unintentionally so. Like uh, he didn't yeah. plan for that to happen; uh, it just did. And now, you know, it's it is something that we can kind of relate to or understand a little more intimately because we're living that to some yeah. degree. Like, it, yeah, it's not zombies, but we are seeing like like we've said before, like the horrors of a zombie apocalypse really isn't the zombies. Like that's just a catalyst People. to expose the rest of it. Yeah. It's to, yeah. to show that the systems are flawed, shows that people are questionably inherently evil. <laughs> like we have, you know, these opportunities when like our society is stripped away to the bare bones to really look at it. And yeah. honestly, like that's what this pandemic has also done is showed us that you know, the government has specific priorities and they are not for the people. Um, and a lot, most of us knew that already, right? But it, it bucks. is so obvious. Yeah. And not even, didn't even, yeah. not even doing it. No one's getting it. Um, and said, you know, was we'll bail out, you know, big companies um, and all of that nonsense. So it's, yeah, it, it's, it's very clear. And also like the way that it is affecting specific communities more because yeah. of lack lack of you know funds or resources, or just like just thinking about the cure or not the cure, sorry the <laughs> the vaccine. The and vaccine, how, yeah. You know, black communities are reluctant, very reasonably so, um, yeah. to take it because America has a very grotesque history of you know hurting um, black bodies for the sake of healing others um, that yeah. they deem more worthy. I mean, you know, Henry Adelax, like, <laughs> say, let, like, Tuskegee, like, anything. Yeah. <laughs> like, Lovecraft Country, let's, you know. Um, yeah. it, it's it's reasonable that there's hesitancy there. And also, like, it, it, the health system has not, you know, cared for, you know, Black people and people of color for a long time. Yeah. Um, and often discredit their pains um which is like you know another part of this too is like if you know in the film that we'll see like what the big twist is which is really quite interesting um without that twist i don't think that they would have no one would, would be going there no one would be going to that reservation for help yeah they would have left it to burn yeah yeah so that's our little facts corner you're welcome we did it. We did a little did dive it. in. We're we're Ooh. we we're kind of tiptoeing in. Yeah, like slowly getting back in. Again, we're not experts in anything. We just we're like quick experts, but we love to learn, and that's what films like this inspire. So if you yeah. are very interested in this and you think that's like, whoa, I didn't know that. That's really what the way that we <laughs> felt when we were writing up this stuff and we found like articles. Continue to look and know that in our show notes we include um, the links Sources. to the yeah. to the articles. So um, read up, and we definitely encourage that. 